Hello learners, in the previous session we discussed about how to determine acceleration using position time and velocity time graph. Also we studied to plot acceleration time graph using the information of position, velocity and time. Now let us continue our discussion. Can we determine the displacement with the help of velocity time graph? Yes, of course, we can determine the displacement using velocity time graph by determining the area under velocity time curve. So, let us see how we can determine by taking a simple example. For this, I consider a simple example wherein I consider that a particle is executing uniform motion that is it is moving with a uniform velocity u between the time interval of let us say t is equal to 0 to t is equal to t time. This is how we plot the velocity time graph. So, along the x axis we take time, along the y axis we take the velocity and since the velocity is uniform throughout the motion, we obtain a parallel line for velocity parallel line to time axis. So, between this time duration of 0 to t time, the velocity is u throughout the motion. Now, let us find out the area under this curve. So, for this, we need to determine the area of this rectangle. So, let us determine the area of the rectangle. So, what will be the area of this rectangle? You know rectangle for the area of rectangle we multiply length with its height or length with its width whatever the multiplication of the two dimensions. So, here one of the dimension is the length we can take to be t minus 0 multiplied by its height or the other side is u minus 0. So, finally, we obtain u into t. Yes. So, this is the product of velocity with time and we all know that the product of velocity with time gives us the displacement of the particle in that time duration. So, that is how we can say that this area of the rectangle or this area under the graph the area under the velocity time graphs represents the displacement between that particular time duration. So, here this is a distance we can denote it by s or we can also denote it by x is equal to u t. We can also verify it dimensionally you know. Here if we multiply the dimension of this time axis that is t with the dimension of the uh, y axis that is u. So, that is l t minus 1. So, what do we get? We get the dimension of length and that is the distance. So, that is how we say, we can say that the area under the velocity time graph represents the displacement. Now, let us take one more example. A graph of velocity versus time of Ritu going to school by cycle from our home is shown below. So, this is a velocity time graph of Ritu who is going to school by cycle from her home. So, we need to describe the motion of Ritu based on the graph and secondly, we need to plot the graph for her acceleration. Now, let us study this VT graph. A graph of velocity versus time of Ritu going to school by cycle from our home is shown below. So, here you can see a velocity time graph. So, this is a graph which is plotted for the motion of the Ritu who is traveling from school, uh, who is traveling to school from our home and here we need to describe the motion of Ritu based on the graph. Secondly, we need to plot the graph for her acceleration as well. So, first of all, let us study this graph. Look at this graph, along the x axis we have time, along the v axis we have velocity and if we uh, divide this graph, if we just uh, divide this graph into the three time intervals, let us say this is 0 to t 1, 
this is T1 to T2 and this is T2 to T3. So, what I have done here, I am just going to study the entire motion in three time durations. Now, let us talk about between the time duration of T is equal to 0 to T is equal to T1. What we may conclude just looking at the velocity time graph. Here we can see that during the entire motion from time 0 to T1, the velocity of Ritu is constant. So, can we say that during this time duration from time 0 to time T1, the velocity was uniform. So, it is a uniform motion. The motion is uniform where the velocity is same. So, this represents uniform motion. Now, let us talk about the another time duration T is equal to T1 to T is equal to T2. Yes. Now, look at this. In this time duration, you can see that the velocity is decreasing. Velocity is decreasing in the time interval of T1 to T2. So, and also since it is a straight line inclined to time axis, we can say that this is the case of deceleration. The velocity is decreasing at the uniform rate. So, it represents constant deceleration. So, it is a constant deceleration. constant deceleration during the time interval of T1 to T2. Now, let us talk about the third time interval of T2 to T3. T is equal to T2 to T is equal to T3. During this time interval again we can see that initially the velocity was somewhat here, but finally when the time is T3 velocity comes to be 0. Again, it represents a uniform deceleration, a uniform deceleration because again we can see that it is a straight line. The velocity time curve represents a straight line which is inclined to time axis. So, it has to be uniform deceleration in this duration also, it is a constant deceleration. Then what is the difference between the deceleration of time interval T1 to T2 and T2 to T3? So, please pay attention over here. Just look at the slope during the time interval of this is T1 and this was T2 and this was T3, right. Now, just compare the slope during the time interval of T1 to T2 and T2 to T3, which has a greater slope. So, we can see that the slope is greater during the time duration of T1 to T2. So, what does it represent? We know greater is the slope, greater is the acceleration or deceleration. So, we may conclude that during the time interval of T1 to T2, the rate of deceleration was greater with compared to the rate of deceleration between the time duration of T2 to T3. So, herein both, uh, both of these time durations T1 to T2 and T2 to T3 are although representing constant deceleration, but there is a difference in the rate. The, the rate of deceleration is more in this time duration because of the steeper slope. Now, let us plot the graph for her acceleration. Suppose I consider time along x axis and acceleration along y axis and I also just label, just label the time durations as T1, T2 and T3 starting from 0 time. Now, let us plot the acceleration time graph for the time interval of 0 to T1, wherein the velocity is uniform. So, since the velocity is uniform, we may conclude that acceleration has to be 0. So, in this duration, we get a line, we get a, we plot a graph, which is overlapping to time axis, since acceleration is 0. So, it is overlapping the time axis in this time duration of 0 to T1. Now, let us talk about between the time duration of T1, T2, T1 and to T2. 
in this duration acceleration is uniform. So, suppose I consider this to be the acceleration in this time duration t 1 to t 2 again acceleration is constant acceleration is uniform. So, it has to be a parallel line to time axis. Now, let us talk about the final time interval from t 2 to t 3 again it is a constant acceleration. So, again the graph need to be parallel to time axis, but what is the difference in this t 1 t 2 and t 2 t 3. Now, just comparatively we do not have the exact values. So, we just compare that it has to be lesser the value of the acceleration has to be lesser we can just drop the perpendicular over here. So, this is comparatively the lesser value of the acceleration between the time duration of t 2 to t 3. Again for a reference only for a clarity only I just drop the perpendiculars with the dotted line over here just to just to study it well in more clear manner that this is how the acceleration is different at different locations. So, 0 to t 1 it is 0 acceleration t 1 to t 2 acceleration is comparatively more with respect to the acceleration between the time duration of t 2 and t 3, but the acceleration in both the durations are uniform. So, what do we study from the simple graph? So, so much of information we can obtain it is a simple velocity time graph with the help of which we have compared the acceleration where the acceleration is more where the acceleration is less by comparing the steepness of the curve and where the velocity was parallel the velocity graph was parallel to time axis we can conclude that in that region acceleration has to be 0. Although it is not asked in the question, but we can even determine the total displacement. How can we determine the displacement? Again, if we find out the area under this graph. So, this complete area determining the area under this curve, we can determine the total displacement of Ritu from her home to her school. Now, let us observe this graph. This is a position time graph wherein we are just going to compare the velocity during the three time intervals that is plotted as 1, 2 and 3 and is indicated by the shaded region in this graph. Now, let us compare this first, second and third time duration. In this just look at the slope, we know that velocity is determined by the slope of the position time graph. So, just compare the slope in the three time intervals 1, 2 and 3. If we look at this during the third time interval the slope is steepest we have the steepest slope and the slope is least during this second time interval right. So, we can say that the velocity is maximum during this third time interval and it is minimum during the second time interval. Same way we can also determine the sign of the velocities. So, here and if we look here uh, just look at this graph again. Here the displacement is negative in this third time interval. So, velocity is negative in this region whereas, in this first and second time interval velocity is positive. Now, we can also relate this velocities acceleration time with the simple equations with the uh, which are known as the kinematic equations for uniformly accelerated motion. So, let us derive the equations which are going to relate somewhat we can say the initial velocity let us say v naught, the final velocity v time t displacement x and a constant acceleration a. So, for this again I consider a situation suppose a particle is moving between these two points this is the origin let us say this is the origin right and at any instant the particle is at this position A and let B be the final position. Suppose at this instant velocity is V naught and here we represent the final velocity as V. The time taken is T here let us say uh, suppose the time taken from position A to position B is T and the, uh, the position is let us say X naught at point A 
and x at point b and the time taken from a to b is t. So, using this information we are going to derive the equations right. So, first of all starting with the equation of instantaneous acceleration we know instantaneous acceleration is equal to dv by dt. Now, proceeding further can we write on it as a dt is equal to dv. Now, this tells the instantaneous situation. Now, suppose I want to know about the entire motion between point A to point B, then we are going to integrate it. We are going to integrate this equation. So, integrating the equation will be A dt and then we are integrating the equation. For integration, we need the lower and the upper limits that is the starting and the final situations. So, here we are going to take the limit of time as we are integrating with respect to time. So, the initial time is 0 and the final time is t and here we need to take the limit of the velocity. So, the initial velocity we consider to be v naught and the final velocity to be v between point A to B. Now, if we integrate this a with respect to dt, then a will be considered as constant. So, actually we are integrating just 1 with respect to time. So, what we are going to get? We are going to get t and this is how we have integrated, put the limits over here. Here the integration of 1, 1 means we are integrating v to the power 0. So, we get v itself and then the limits are written as v naught to v and now substituting the upper limit minus lower limit. We get this is equal to v minus v naught. So, finally, we can rearrange the equation as v is equal to v naught plus a into t and this is also known as the first equation of motion. Now, for simplicity, generally it is considered that the initial velocity is u. We represent initial velocity as u. So, here if we represent initial velocity that is v naught equals to u, our equation can be rewritten as v is equal to u plus a t and generally the equation, the first equation of motion is used in this form v is equal to u plus a t wherein u is the initial velocity, v is the final velocity, a is the uniform acceleration and t is the time duration of that motion. Now, proceeding further for the second equation of motion, we start with equation of instantaneous velocity. We know that v is equal to dx over dt. Again, it can be written as dx is equal to v times of dt, just cross multiplying and at place of v, I am just substituting the first equation of motion that is dx is equal to v naught plus a t into dt. Now, in the right hand side we have to integrate both the terms with respect to time. So, here integrating this e entire equation what do we get? Integrating dx is equal to v naught again v naught will be constant with respect to time. So, just writing it like this a is again constant with respect to time we can say. right for the small time velocity is constant for the small acceleration is constant here only right. Now, writing the limits the lower limit is x naught that is initially we have considered between the two points a and b if you remember we have considered this point to be the origin this point to be the position x naught and here we consider it to be x. So, the initial position is x naught at point a and the final position is x. So, the limits will be x naught to x. Here the limit we have to take for time which is again time 0 to t and time 0 to t again. Now, when we integrate this equation what do we get? Yes, on the left hand side we get x integrating x to the power 0 with respect to x and the limits will be x naught to x equals to again 
v naught is common and we are going to integrate t e power 0 with respect to time. So, we get t again 0 to t then plus a integration of t will be t square by 2. So, 2 is constant I take it like this and t square and put the limit as 0 to t. Now, substituting the upper and the lower limits we get x minus x naught is equal to v naught into t minus 0 will be v naught t itself plus here we will get half a t square. So, this is actually the second equation of motion. Again for our simplicity we can consider generally we consider the initial position to be at the origin. So, here if I substitute the initial position to be at the origin. So, we will say x naught equals to 0 right the, and v naught equals to u that is the initial velocity we represent as u. So, our equation takes a form as x is equal to u t plus half a t square. So, this is how we represent the second equation of motion. Now, let us derive the another equation of motion for which we again start with the equation of instantaneous acceleration where we write a is equal to dv by dt. Now, in this equation if I multiply and divide the right hand side with dx, it does not make any difference in the equation right. Now, but what we can uh, write down the equation as now this dx upon dt can be considered as instantaneous velocity right. So, I am just arranging the equation in this manner this dx changing the side of the dx and then writing this dx by dt as v and then this dv right. Now, again I integrate this entire equation acceleration then integrating dx with the limit of x. So, here the limits are x naught to x again the same limits we are taking is equal to integrating v with respect to dv and the limits will be v naught to v right. Now, this a is constant here for the small displacement a is constant a is otherwise constant also it is a uniform acceleration. Now, uh, the integration of x to the power naught x to the power 0 the integration of x to the power 0 will be x and the lower limit upper limit here integration of v with respect to dv will be v square by 2. So, we get v square by 2 and then again writing the limit as lower to upper. Now, substituting the limits what do we get a x minus x naught is equal to half it will become v square minus v naught square and this is actually termed as a third equation of motion. Now, again making our equation simple we consider x naught to be 0 and v naught equals to u. So, the equation becomes now a x and this 2 can be taken to this side. So, it becomes 2 a x is equal to v square minus u square or we can write down it as v square minus u square is equal to 2 a x and this is actually termed as the third equation of motion. Now, we can see that three equations are obtained using a simple condition using a simple example of uniform accelerated motion. Now, these equations can be applied in different situations in different examples of motion in which the body is moving with uniform acceleration and the various other physical quantities can be determined. So, these are the three kinematic equations for uniformly accelerated motion they are the first equation is v is equal to u plus a t the second equation is s is equal to u t plus half a t square 
and the third equation is v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s where the symbols are u is for the initial velocity, v for the final velocity, a for acceleration, t for time and s is for displacement. So, we can use these, these three equations according to the requirement according to the given situations in various examples of uniform accelerated motions. Now, let us recall what we have learned today. We have studied that the area under the VT curve represents the displacement over a given time interval. Next, we derived the three kinematic equations for uniformly accelerated motion which are V is equal to u plus a t s is equal to ut plus half a t square and v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s.